On steamy Pryan, never-ending sunlight and plentiful rain have created a jungle so vast that humans and elves dwell high in the trees and only dwarves live anywhere near the ground. From the treetops, their aristocratic elves sell weapons to the other races, whose incessant warfare sends a steady stream of profits and essential resources skyward. Now, generations of dissent and race hatred will not heal, not even under the threat of annihilation at the hands of legendary titans. Armed with little more than their wits and prophecy, an elf, a human, and a dwarf must unite to try to save the world from destruction. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's Elven Star. Elven Star is a 1990 novel by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, and book two in the Deathgate Cycle, which is a seven-book series. I have previously reviewed book one, which... Uh, I read a while ago, so I also reviewed it quite a while ago, but I will link that here. Um, and this is a an interesting continuation of that first book. Uh, the prologue gives us more of the Sartan and the Labyrinth and Haplo, uh, you know, going through the gates of, you know, these worlds, right? And specifically Haplo getting to this world, right, which is Priam. This then does not take place on the world of air like Book 1, but on Prion, that of fire. This is a world of great forests with mega-sized trees that humans and elves live in. Dwarves live lower on these trees. Uh, the sun shines continuously. Um, it's essentially like a Dyson Sphere world in a lot of ways. Uh, it's, it rains very often as well. The characters from the first book are absent, largely. Uh, Noah Hugh the Hand, of course. Uh, Haplo makes an appearance, though. Uh, Ziffnap is essentially Fizban from Dragonlands, and he does make an appearance as well. It's rather interesting. Uh, this makes it a certain brand of epic fantasy, uh, one that is funny but a bit much at other times. Uh, Fizban was one of my favorites in Dragonlance, and he does some weird grounding in an otherwise very cool and largely unique fantasy world. He mentions some extra diegetic things like Gandalf the Grey, Star Wars, the Challenger Disaster, and so forth. Uh, though the first book also had plenty of whimsy with the dwarves. Um, this is definitely a different book and definitely an interesting one. And some people have said that it kind of is unnecessary plot wise for the main series, but I've so far as of reviewing this, I've only read the first four books, but, um, it is very interesting because Weiss and Hickman definitely have done something extremely unique here. I'd say, I mean, I've read some interesting fantasy books and sci-fi books with odd worlds, uh, but this is definitely, comes off as very unique even though it's grounded in these elves and these dwarves and so forth we have a character named calandra who's an elf uh, she's you know of course new uh she's called callie and is a rather serious character her sister aliatha though is a flirt uh python is their brother uh, he makes a deal with humans roland and rega and the latter a woman who connives with roland to seduce python for nefarious reasons uh, this does not go as planned. Uh, Roland and Rega are to go and deliver arms to some dwarves, and the dwarf character, really, that is important in the story is Drugar. Uh, Equilon is one kingdom, uh, Thilia another, and the place of the Sea Kings another, and there are more, of course. There's also dragons, um, some flirting, which isn't the best, <laughs> and then the, the big problem is the titans, which are essentially giants. Um, and looking at other people's thoughts, this seems to be the least favorite of the seven again. Some say the story is irrelevant to the rest of the series, and I'm interested to see if that's true. And after going a little further into the series, it does seem a little irrelevant as we get Haplo in this book, but we don't get much of Haplo. He's almost just traveling across the realm while these events are happening. <laughs> and they're like tangential to like the big main series it's still an enjoyable read um, but because of that since it doesn't seem all that important it was kind of forgettable actually even looking back at it now and looking at some of his characters i don't remember some of his characters names i'm just reading my notes essentially and my my other complaint would be the the odd pacing of it which was was a problem i had with the first book even though i found the first book rather memorable and enjoyable overall and that being said i still found this enjoyable overall as well and uh i We'll tell you more about books three and four when uh, shortly, I'm, I think. So anyways, Liam from Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.